Can I ask a really standard or big question? But, uh, where did this all begin? Because everyone's been wanting more Buffy for, you know, we've had comics and we've had some different things you know, to, to satisfy us, but it's always been going back to the series. So how did this all come together? So um, it really came together because uh, I was having a conversation with uh, our friend Lydia, who's a uh, and then exec at Audible about the fact that they had gotten the rights to do this and immediately I jumped in as I would in a case like that and said, well, hey, I want to do that, but be the only way that this is going to work is if it's Amber. Mm. I have the role in this. Well, it's not just that. And I can make the phone calls. <laughs> it's, it's, it's not just that, but more importantly, and I know you hate what I hear, but it's, like, it's that... Uh, First of all, we have written together many times over a lot of years. We wrote an animated series for BBC. Chris and his family are my first family. Yeah. I stay on the air mattress in their basement when I come to... to no, my daughter lets you sleep in the princess bed. I did get to sleep in the princess bed. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But, but, but the, the key for me is that uh, there's a level of trust. There's a level, you know, that, that, that everybody involved knew that um, if... We were doing this together. Amber was writing, directing. That they would be in hands that cared, that, that were caring for them. Uh, and I'm 100% certain that there's no way to do this without you. Uh, so we all got that on film too. So we can't even kind of walk that back. I was gonna say something pithy and silly, but it, they gave me Kleenex before I came in here. So it's been really emotional. I think for me, like how we treat each other is really important and like everyone getting back together together and, and being a family is really really important and the love is real. <laughs> I feel like so often we work on stuff and like oh I like them they're fine but this like I love these people I love these people we see each other convictions and it's like I hug them and I it's not just like and to be able to, to give some of them like closure on it that didn't, didn't get closure uh, was really wonderful and to there was, some, there was some like rough stuff that we've all been through as a group, and to like try and, try and make this a better experience was, was high on our list. Chris, we keep saying you guys are people forward. I'm like, yeah, we are. We're people, we're people forward, and I think the world should be that way in general. So we try. We mess up. Everybody does, but you know, we try. That's all you can do. What is it about the Buffy verse that has kept people wanting more for such a long time? It's, it's bananas. Like, I was at an event and this woman came up, she had a stroller with a little kid in it, and she's and then a couple of like like nine, ten year olds, and she's like, kids, kids, it's grandpa's favorite thing. It's grandpa's favorite fandom. <laughs> and I was like, oh my god, so it's the little tiny, the mint, the ma and then the grand well, I mean, there's something about the show that brings people together. I know I'm not allowed to say show because we're on strike. There's something about so. the fandom. Yeah. There's something about the fandom. Yeah, I'll edit you know, that out. As you guys all know, SAG after on strike, I'm going to be very respectful of the rules. Um, I don't want to get in trouble later because right, I love my name. Um, but uh, I think that there's something about the fandom that brings people together, and there's something about um, the the character of this Tara McClay who's in our our awful original podcast layers. I always have to get it in. Um, who who because of what she's been through and the relationship and the, the, the queer sort of factor, I think it brings people together, it brings families. You know, I think so many so many people in this world, like, oh, I live in, a, in an insular environment. I don't know anybody who's different than me. So I can I can spend time listening to this show and I'm like, oh, I like all these people. And they're different than me. Some of them are queer. Some of them come from a, a whole other, you know, way of life. And, and I feel like... I like them, so maybe everybody's kind of cool. I, mean, you know. I just want to like wrap up real quick on it and, and just say that. Um, I, I know I was going like. That, no, no, just to say that. Um, for me, I feel like no matter what you actually look like, no matter who you actually present as or look like in life, um, everybody feels like an outsider sometimes, and some people feel like an outsider all the time. And I think more than anything else. Um, this story in general and this world in general is a world where everybody can watch it and feel like, oh, um, I can be part of this. I can be, be with these people. I can be heroic. I can have people at my side, you know? People listen to this and there's a character that you identify with right? and you see yourself in. And I think that brings people together. Why Spike to... Oh, I'm so sorry. No, I was going to say, um, 
um, and to start. I absolutely love the Audible original series, and I think that it really holds true to the original universe. Um, were, was there some sort of pressure when you guys were writing it to sort of make sure that, you know, with this fandom and how attached we are to all these characters, how, was there pressure in that? And if so, how did you deal with it? For me, it's internal pressure because um, I've been a fan since day one. Um, in fact, you know, I wrote what, 13 Buffy novels, two video games, tons of comics, and all that stuff. I didn't do that just for the work. I did it because I loved it, and I'm engaged on those characters. I debated other fans and all of that stuff. So, so for me, the pressure is internal. Um, um, and it also meant that we could play with things and do really fun things that we knew, like, People are gonna love this. People are gonna love that. You know, and then we took risks with some things as well. But. Yeah. Yeah. The women we were working with at Audible, Lydia and Maggie, are country, and so they kept us honest. They were always like, "We like it. We feel like it's true." Yeah. Yeah. You had a question? Yes. So we take really yeah. Oh, of course. Why Spike to continue the story? And I don't know if I don't want you to give anything away from the series, but just why that particular character. So, so he's our narrator mm -hmm. for a number of the, the episodes, but it's actually an ensemble. That's mm -hmm. what we realized when we were putting it all together. Because, uh, you know, originally we had, it was called Spike and Drew. That's what we had sort of the, the working title. And then as we were recording, it became very clear that, like, this is the song. This is the song. I can do it incredible. Mm -hmm. But they're part of. Right. You know? Yeah. Um, so, but having the Jane, I love film noir. Yeah. Having, like, this narrator. Who's in your ear, you know, like talking to you. Whispering. And that voice in your ear. I know, that, I'm so into it. I love that Anne Zira is a super fan, too. It's like you're paying me. So important. Yes. Did you, she's, she's our input person. She can, like, give us information about mythology, yeah. about me. Yeah. It's Leia. Yeah. Yeah. Leia Dillon yeah. 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 is She's going to be so famous. We're yeah. only going to be able to, like, touch her shoes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, I know we have to go, but I just have to say also on Leia that... Um, Leia's presence in the studio made every single other member of the cast like, oh, oh, we're doing it. All right. So, because um, she's so good, like, boom, she comes in and kills it. And everyone went, oh, all right, we're serious now. All right. We're not playing. Thank you. Thank you so much.